Jason Aaron and Ed McGuinness cap off their Marvel event as the reassembled Avengers confront the Squadron Supreme of America in Wakanda, battling the villains as President Coulson rushes to release the power of Hell's Pandemonium Cube to rewrite history yet again. Jason Aaron finishes up his big Marvel event that with this final issue really displays how it was definitely meant to be just a normal Avengers story arc, not Marvel's big summer event. That's not me saying that it's an absolute train wreck, but this issue does absolutely feel like the finale of what was meant to be probably a 4 or 5 issue arc. The issue is just pure action and moves at breakneck speeds to finish up the story so that all our heroes and villains get a moment to battle one another while Coulson, who was the architect of this whole thing, barely even appears here even at the end, where he uses his cube MacGuffin to try and remake the universe yet again. His story just really suffered here since it felt like there were missing huge chunks of it and huge chunks of his character development, and maybe in making this story into an event, his story should have been expanded on in previous issues, but it wasn't, it's as if he is still part of when this was an Avengers story arc, not a summer event. The DC Comics pastiche is all but dropped here, which makes sense given that we're picking up with the Avengers now, not the Squadron Supreme. Although I did like the references to Kryptonite and the actual ending and return of the 616 universe, it really did feel like how DC usually ends their crisis events, with everything kind of going back to normal with a few changes here and there like the Star Brand and Hyperion still existing in the world with Nighthawk and everything. Ed McGuinness transitions from the backups in Heroes Reborn to full book artist again since we are back with the Avengers now, and his action style is just fantastic and in full display here since the book is 90% action. And I really miss seeing his artwork over the entire book through this event, so with him coming back it just feels right since he's definitely become one of my favourite Avengers artists thanks to his unique, almost action figure like style for the characters that just seems to fit really well with them. Heroes Reborn issue 1 was an alright tie up for Marvel's summer event, but this issue really drove home the idea that this story was just meant to be an Avengers arc, and it was turned into an event maybe at the last minute just to cover some bases thanks to COVID and the pandemic. With this in final storm and rushing to revert everything back to normal, that some characters are left undeveloped or forgotten about altogether. I'm going to give this issue a 7 out of 10. Heroes Return Issue 1 finds President Coulson deal with Reed Richards, Shield Labs and Peter Parker after they come to his office with reports of unusual energy readings. He tells his assistant he dealt with them, wanting his car brought round to him. Coulson boards his limo jet and heads off to Northeast Africa, wanting fighters to be ready to drop their full payloads on his signal, telling them to target Wakanda and that they should try not hit the Squadron Supreme, but if they do end up dead, it won't be the end of the world. Above Wakanda, Thor battles Hyperion. Angered, he vomited on his girlfriend, but Thor knows he'll need to be more specific. Hyperion tries to use his atomic vision on the hero, but Thor says that he has such angry eyes, but his are angrier as he unleashes his lightning. Phoenix Mimo battles Power Princess, who tells Zada that this won't be as fun as the warrior thinks, unless she finds burning fun. Power Princess survives the hero's inferno as Dr. Spectrum tells Brandy he won't be fighting a child, despite doing anything to save Earth from the savages of the stars. Brandy unleashes the star brand on him. Him, saying that he doesn't need to fight, he just needs to cry when she breaks him. She attacks him in the name of Rocket as Blur assaults Black Panther, quipping that the guy with cat powers is super lame, and he will need to be faster than a panther to catch him. T'Challa, however, easily elbows Stanley in the face, saying this is Wakanda, where the panthers are made of vibranium and heart-shaped herbs. Panther races after Blur, saying the vibranium remembers what it was like to be a high-speed meteor, exciting Blur who wants a race. Blade confronts Nighthawk meanwhile not understanding the villain's deal since he doesn't know why all his friends are afraid of him since he's just some rich kid who bought his reputation and he probably hasn't had a hard day in his life and Blade is what happens when all you get are hard days. Nighthawk says he's about to have the hardest day yet as he attacks. Above in the clouds, Captain America is told by T'Challa American jets are on their way alongside the president. Cap races up to the jet as Carol Danvers realizes it's Captain America, but her wingman knows that he died during World War II. Carol 
Carol says that there's a man dressed as a flag on the roof of the limo, wondering if they are going to shoot the American flag now. Cap lands on Coulson's limo, cutting a hole in the roof and demanding Coulson speak with him. Coulson uses the cube to blast Steve, seeing that he wants a word as well, and that word is goodbye. Hyperion and Thor's battle meanwhile heads down to the ground as Hyperion says that America has all the gods it needs. He tries to burn up Mjolnir with his atomic vision, punching Thor over and over and over, and realizing that his face is harder than the hammer, and he is growing weak with every punch, finding something is draining his powers. Thor's power erupts as the hero says that this isn't America, wondering if Hyperion knows what Wakanda is built on, and they all have their weaknesses, and where his is mead and beer, Hyperion's is vibranium crystals. Thor drops the hammer as Black Panther continues to chase Blur, who knows the hero isn't fast enough. Panther however slashes Blur's legs, crippling him as the T'Challa says that all of the ligaments in his legs have been severed, and he'll need surgery and serious rehab to ever walk again. Blur knows it's not just his legs that make him special as he blasts Panther with a whirlwind punch, proclaiming that this is his world. Starbrand meanwhile melts Dr. Spectrum's prism, destroying it and demanding the villain cry as she searches for her next battle. Echo Mimol is wrapped up in the invisible barbed wire of Ares as she calls for help with Power Princess. Panther knocks down Blur, who continues to rant about this world being his as Blade says Nighthawk is just a man, but he's more than that and he doesn't want Kyle to make this worse. Kyle cuts Blade's sword in half as he says that he knows what Blade was before the world changed, saying he's Nighthawk, so he easily figured it out. He throws a Hawkerang into Blade's chest, electrocuting the hero. Coulson, meanwhile, confronts Captain America on the roof of the car, told that he'll tell the heroes what he did once the world is put back in order. The insane Coulson isn't pleased with that, hitting Cap with a cube as he says that the world languished in chaos ever since those heroes showed up, calling the Avengers the Earth's most overrated heroes, and they must be stopped, and he did it by simply selling his soul, a small price to pay for a perfect world. Carol Danvers, however, clips the president with her jet, knocking the cube from his hand as Starbrand attacks Power Princess with Echo, who knows that while she doesn't know Brandy, she figures that the Starbrand and the Phoenix go way back. Both heroes unleash their powers on Zarda, defeating her as Thor demands Hyperion yield to him so he doesn't have to kill him, as the hero knows fighting Hyperion is like fighting the sun and he can feel the hammer and maybe even his bones cracking. Thor is dealt with by Hyperion as Nighthawk tells Blade to stay down, but the Daywalker says that he's been hearing that since the day he was born, and he won't stop this fight. He's blasted by the arriving Hyperion's atomic vision, as the hero tells Nighthawk about the metal weakening him. Nighthawk had already known about the vibranium and how it was a chunk of Hyperion's homeworld, with its radiation killing him. Mark isn't happy with Nighthawk's secrets, since he knew they would get them killed. He asks Kyle about the changed world, wondering if it's true, but Nighthawk doesn't think it matters, since it won't make Mark fight any less for the world. Hyperion knows that the Avengers are their Earth's mightiest heroes, but nothing can compare when both he and Nighthawk stand together. Black Panther knows it won't be enough, not while he still lives, as T'Challa attacks both Hyperion and Nighthawk, while Captain America tells the team not to let Coulson use the cube. Steve jumps from the crashing car as Hyperion tells Black Panther that he's taken lives because he knew it would save the world, and now the Avengers are saying that none of that mattered. Enraged, Hyperion wonders if any of this was even real, as Captain America says it was all real, and he hopes the hero won't forget it. Cap hits Hyperion with his vibranium shield as Phoenix and Starbrand focus their power into the cube, feeling the burning rage coming from it. Echo knows that their primordial forces have protected Earth for eons, so they will now set things right. Nighthawk wants the Avengers to remember how the squadron made the world safer and better than they ever could, and remember, despite everything ending, he was still standing there at the end. Thor wants to see about that, winding up his hammer for a hit as Coulson reaches for the pandemonium cube, obliterated in a blinding light as he tells Mephisto he did everything the devil wanted. The Earth reverts back to the original 616 universe, with played awakening in Chernobyl surrounded by vampires, something he is relieved by. At Avengers Mountain, Iron Man knows that this is some space weirdness, wondering if they know if the Starbrand is even really the Starbrand. Cap says the only thing he remembers is putting the baby to bed, but Brandy still retained her child form from the universe changing, saying the next one to call her a baby will get branded. In New York, Hyperion looks over the Daily Bugle, meeting with Spider-Man, who asks if he's lost. Hyperion says that he suppose he is lost, so Peter says he's in New York and maybe he can help him, knowing that he's one of the Squadron Supreme guys. Hyperion leaves, saying that he was just looking for an old friend, but it seems that he isn't at the Bugle anymore. Blade knows that Coulson has 
has disappeared and the squadron's status is unknown, as at the Pentagon, agents interrogate Blur and the other squadron members. Stanley tells them who he is, wanting to show them what he can do, but he doesn't feel like moving. A voice knows that there is no such person as Stanley Stewart, and Stanley never even exists, as do any of the others, wondering where Coulson found them. The frustrated Blur says that he just wants to be set back to his world, since people liked him there. Blade doesn't know how he's going to brief the other Avengers about what happened, since none of them will remember, wondering if he should tell them how the world looked without them. Nighthawk, meanwhile, however, is still much alive, knowing that the world wasn't a mistake and it was one that made sense and it will again, even if he has to change it alone. Blade, meanwhile, knows that this was an attack on the Avengers, one that changed history just to get rid of them. Coulson, meanwhile, is trapped in the cube as Mephisto says that he entrusted a minion with the Helahedron and that he still failed and now pays the price. But this is more than that and this was to bring them all together across the red gulfs between hells. Mephisto says that this was all about showing everyone else what can be done with the power of one Mephisto and he wants his brothers and sisters to imagine what they could accomplish with 615 more. Mephisto stands above the other Mephistos from every other universe, hailing the beginning of the Council of Red.